Welcome to Thursday Night uh, Fading Suns. I am Jane, your GM, and with me as always are the crew of... You still don't have a ship. I still don't know what to call you. You're not the four horsemen. That's my uh, that's my tour game. But welcome to the Ulysses International Channel. Uh, this is Fading Suns, a science fantasy game uh, produced by Ulysses Spiel that is coming uh, soon. Backers have PDFs already. And physical products are going to be coming out here very soon. Um, but if you are at all interested in Ulysses and what they uh, they provide uh, and what uh, games are available, they do have on Game on Tabletop right now uh, the next Torg um, Cosm crowdfunding, which is uh, Tharkold, uh, a post-apocalyptic meets Hellraiser... Uh, all sorts of um, fun uh, Russia with nukes and techno demons. So if you've been following the Four Horsemen game and you want to check out Tharkold, go check it out on Game on Tabletop. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, go check out the Four Horsemen um, actual play that we do on this stream on Tuesday nights. But if you were here for Fading Suns, they still have the Late Pledge um, Manager open. Uh, so if you are waiting or, or feel like you've missed out and want to back Fading Suns, the late pledge is open. If you go to GameOnTabletop.com, just search for Fading Suns, you'll be able to find it. Um, so yeah, when we last left off, you guys had managed to break into the shrine of... Um, the Hesperians, which turned out to be an old chapel of Beatrice. It looked, St. Beatrice, it looked very much like the one that you found on Antioch. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, in confronting this avatar of um, Ashkagael, this uh, Regina, as she went by, um, you managed to destroy an altar that she was uh, to the pan creator that she was uh, attempting to defile. She had defiled and was attempting to reconsecrate uh, to the darkness between stars. Um, after the confrontation, you managed to uh, drive her off with some well-placed um, rounds carved from another altar uh, found on the uh, Raven's Blood around uh, in orbit around Antioch, and seemingly dispelled the uh, presence of Ashkagael and the uh, physical form of Regina only to have it reappear and snatch Perpetua and disappear in a um, torrent of feathers and viscera. So we're going to pick up kind of right there. The feathers hitting the floor, a little bit of wet slop also hitting the floor. What are you guys doing? I was standing right there. And so I will have moved in order to grab Perpetua, only to find her gone. That's right. Despite your speed and nine million arms. Yes. <laughs> you get nothing but a, uh, a just a bushel of handfuls of feathers and blood. I, I do want to keep some of the feathers. Okay. Um, in order to help my understanding in tracking her. I, I mean, I understand she is a non-entity. I understand that she is a demon, but I want something of hers in order to track. Um, you have clearly gathered that. Lovely. Um, I will fall to my knees in part uh, out of supplication, but also in part out of, she ripped a rib out of my body, and ow! She did. Um, and that's still a problem. Um, Can you still perform your priestly functions, Father Bell, or will you have to seek out another career of possibly tax collecting or toll booth operating? I'll be fine. <laughs> It's too bad. I've always wondered for whom the bell tolls. So... Well. No? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Not giving you a weird point for that one. You got the groan. <laughs> Be happy with it. 
<laughs> so I, we I, fulfilled what we came to do. We got rid of Jenna. Yes, you have we, you have you have the yeah. bounty that you uh, can turn in when you get back to uh, more civilized space. You have the we bounty got... on Boris that you can turn in when you get back to more civilized space. Um, and as you are kind of standing there, your your squawker kind of comes on, and it is Kanam Hawkwood. Did you do it? Yep. Yeah. Is she gone? They both are. Excellent. Um, I have spoken with the new commander of the Hesperians, and they are willing to give you six hours to get off New Phoenicia. Lovely. We will take that. <laughs> I go attempt to remedy Father Bell as he falls to his knees. I will go check. Do I see blood? Uh, you see blood on his robes, but you can't find yeah. a wound. Oh, so I can't do remedy on him? I mean, you can. You just don't find okay. a wound. Well, I mean, but it's <laughs> obvious he just didn't fall down to pray. He, oh, he's bleeding. Yeah. He kind of fell down into the right as if one of his ribs are missing and he can now bend there where he couldn't before. Um, <clears throat> uh, you also, um, he is mangled, which means you have to treat the mangled state before... Okay, I will attempt to treat the mangled state. I'm glad I raised my wits. Oh yeah, hey, what did everybody take as their... Uh, Everything? Uh, their, when you guys leveled up. Mark, what did you take when you leveled up? Um, All right, before, before we get into that. So, uh, Fading Suns has levels, but it is not like a class system. There are classes, but it is not a class system. When you level up in Fading Suns, you get more points to spend and spread out uh, to your characters. So you'll get more at, uh, characteristic points. You'll get more skill points. You'll get more capabilities. You can pick up new um, talents. Um, you perks, mean perks. perks, that's what they're called. Yeah. Level 4 is pretty big. Devault goes to 15. Uh, increased vitality. Your revive goes up. Surge amount goes up. Uh, I know I have two. We all have two surges plus one because of a perk. Uh, for skills, my observe went up. Remedy went up. I took streetwise as a capability, dealing with all this riffraff. I raised my wits for characteristics. And I already had taken uh, Marksman 2 for a perk uh, as a Partial, partial advancement, advancement. Before, but then you, right. I get a calling perk and I took that. Okay, runner, what did you take? Um, the perk I had taken earlier was Blood Hunter or Bloodhound, sorry, and then the capability I picked up was Jump Gate Lore. Okay, um, in my yeah, in the past, I mean, how even long have we been together like two weeks? <laughs> We've dealt with a lot of crazy, especially in the jump gate, going to different areas. Um, and then, I mean, I've increased my pilot skill, and then I think I increased my will and my strength. So, yeah. Um, I took, uh, it's been a little while because uh, we did like a partial mm -hmm. increase. So I think that Mantok was the thing that I took. I think uh, you did right take at the start Mantok. of this. Event. And then uh, let's see. Um, I spent a bit on my survival. Spent a bit on my vigor. Spent a bit on my melee combat. Um, and let's see, we didn't get a. I'm not sure I applied my. I didn't actually apply my characteristic increase yet. I actually missed that. We got that. So I will be increasing my, um, my wits and my faith. Okay. And, and oh. uh, no, sorry, please what? continue. I did not mean to cut you off. And um, yeah, that's pre that's pretty much it. 
And Father Bell, what did you take? New uh, trickery? Possibly new tomfoolery? Uh, or we'll be creating more hullabaloo. Um, uh, by capability, uh, I, uh, I uh, solidified my history, knowledge of history, and uh, so have history lore you now. Um, in terms of uh, skills, uh, I had uh, improved, uh, I believe, charm, uh, impress, and observe. Um, in my characteristic points, uh, I increased my theurgy uh, okay. from five to six, and my presence from five to six. Uh, and uh, my calling perk, I uh, or I uh, took uh, a uh, another right, uh, all seeing eye. And just for the sake of your GM who has to prepare for that, what does that one do? Yeah, <laughs> what does it do? Uh, indeed, um, it's a it's a cross cross reference to a psi power called Farsight, which. Uh, allows me to project my vision to another location as if seeing uh, and your own eyes were presence. As a primary action, you can move your point of view slowly uh, to, uh, to move around the area once you get there. Um, and uh, the more you know the area, the easier it is, the harder it is. Like you're trying to see a place you don't know but have some personal link, like a warehouse where your friend is being held captive, that's Herculean. Okay. Uh, but trying to see my home, my home living quarters, where I know exactly where it is, that's simply hard. All right. So you have three hour, or six hours that you're allowed to stay on the station before... Uh, it looks like the Hesperians may uh, forget the good that you've done for them and run you out of town. So what is the plan? My first revenue roll, uh, I got a nine. So I succeed because you just have to do at least one. If you can heal at least one point, then you remove the mangled state. You want me to roll again to heal points? Do yes. I, in, in doing this, do I feel a missing rib or is it? You definitely feel like the rib is gone. Oh. Yeah. You don't have enough ribs. Were you a gymnast when you were younger? Oh. Yeah, remove the ribs, get contortionists type stuff. Uh, two for one, I heal five plus one, you get six. Uh, so Mark, you I actually tell... have to do surgery to remove the mangled state using the oh. operate action. If it happened in a different scene. That's why I want to try to do it right away instead of leaving. Hmm. Did I read that wrong? I am double checking uh, that. I'm looking under uh, remedy under the skill. Under treat wounds. The mangle in the same scene, you can move it. If the mangle in the earlier scene, you must use operate. Maneuver oh, okay, yeah, no, there it is. An earlier scene, you must use I the operating lever. Nope, you got it right. No. Which would make a difference if, like, we had to run away, get back to the ship. Well, now it's too late. Now you're going to have to get operate on him. I don't have operate. And it's a restricted thing because that's not in my path. I'd have to have someone teach me that. So. I have surgery lore, but I don't think I want to operate on myself. Yeah, operating yourself is always just a weird thing. Uh, so it, it happens, so, you know, bottle of vodka and you go for it. So I, I am going to say, Mark, that because the rib was removed supernaturally, that he is going to require more than just what you can do here to remove the mangled state. You can't just I can, you can't okay. just remedy up a rib. Uh, that that will require the shipboard operations. I can okay. probably walk out of here at least. Oh, you can. <laughs> as long as somebody's standing on your right side, kind of holding you up. Just, just was it left, left or right? right that he leans Gabriel to. is my strong right arm. That's so. right. He 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 lists to the fine. right. All right, runner, you're in charge here. What's going on? 
Um, after I see Cutter finish helping Father Bell, I'm going to gather everyone and we're going to head back to the ship um, that we, we came in on. Brother, we should bring Brother Theodosius. If we run into him and he would like to join us, yes. Who, who, who's outside. The, the, um, the Brother sanctuary Keeler. and healer that we rescued mm -hmm. and released. Maybe he can help you because it's beyond my ken. Okay. Do we see him as we go back to Boris's dropship? Uh, if you head back out the back way, then yes, you definitely see uh, uh, Brother Theodosius is still there kneeling and praying um, to the Pancreator for uh, victory against the uh, the demon from the darkness. He is His eyes are closed. You don't know if he's sleeping or praying, but as you get closer, you definitely hear uh, the raspy hoarse whisper of several of the litanies of the pan creator i'll just say skip a bit brother um <laughs> we're getting you out of here uh, uh amen and he sort of stands up <laughs> all right so we will take that ship can we take that ship over to our ship in the hangar? You totally can, yes. Will it fit in our ship in the no. hangar? We'll take it over to the hangar, and then some of us will go and get Boris and bring him back. Okay. Didn't we put we him on the ship? Get his head and Boris's live breathing body. Didn't we put him on the ship? I thought we did. You, le guard? you left nope. Boris with Alexi. Uh, okay. We just talked about it then? You did, yes. but never came to that conclusion. Um, okay. Our pilot was not comfortable with that idea. I'm going to go lie down. All right. Uh, Brother Cutter, Theodosius, you... I suggest that you take a shower and then maybe prep for surgery. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, he... Uh, if I am needed... Pancrater's will be done. And he sort of stumbles towards the shower. Are you going to be good here if the ship's secured, Father Bell? While yeah. we retrieve our... I will be fine. Guest. Brother Gabriel, you're up for an escort? Once more to the south first. Yes. Uh, escort at your service. Ah, uh, you humans. There um, are times I'm in the game to... where you just keep your mouth shut as the GM. <laughs> you know, it's it's in the lore that the Brother Battles do like to hire themselves out as, as escorts for ship and pilgrimages and the point of contention among some of us yeomans that you guys just pocket all that money and get richer. Well, as it happens, we, uh, we brother battles do not, uh, uh, we don't take escort service merely for the money. Uh, it's more of a pleasure thing. The money is just for, uh, as for the order. Yes. Somewhere on I the really uh, my work. somewhere on the uh, on New Phoenicia, Alexi's like something is going on. I feel as if there's been a great shift in the balance of this of this asteroid. Yep. All right. So Cutter, Runner, and Gabriel, you are all going to uh, pick up Boris. Sure. All right. So you may, as you sort of make your way um, back to the South Purse, you can see uh, that 
there are a large number of Hesperians. Remember, they had a huge compound that they were sort of holed up in. There are a lot more Hesperians on the street. And they seem to be out in force. Several of them sort of nod at Runner and Cutter and you, Brother Gabriel. But they don't actually come up and interact. And soon you find yourself back at the Sow's Purse. Um, Alexi uh, is in his room in a in a uh, a silk robe that is far too short and shows up off far too much hairy thigh. And he is currently like mopping his head with a cold towel, and he has something fizzy in a glass. Ah, oh, my friends. Yes. Welcome back. I did not expect you so soon. It's taking a breather. What can I do for you? We're here to pick up Boris. And let you know that you... Boris... ...have fulfilled... ...your... Uh, ...obligation to Dorian... ...if you still have Boris with you... ...and we can take him off your hands. Boris... Listen, this has been pretty wild night. I don't know if you heard, but somebody went and attacked the Hesperian compound. Um, she had a lot of blood. Not saying that I did not have a hand in it, but... Um, I don't really remember much of the last several hours. What? Who is this Boris you're looking for again? The gentleman we left with you tied up on our chair. You're going to have to be more specific. The pirate gentleman we left with you. Oh, Boris! Why did you not say so? Come! And he turns far too quickly for a robe that short. And then moves into the side room. Where um, Boris is gambling. Um, they have uh, removed the chair from the table. And it looks like the top came off in two pieces. And there is a massive... Um, roulette table underneath and Boris is cheering everyone else is cheering and uh, when you guys all walk into the room everything goes silent, silent and all you hear is click 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 and a bunch of people just sigh very quietly as um, uh, this thing with multiple arms not a not a runner uh, but more of like a like an octopuppy uh, it starts raking in different um, uh, stacks of of firebirds. Boris, your friends are here. Yes, what? Does the octopuppy have a name? This is Becca who wants to know. Of course, octopuppy has a name. I purchased these things from Byzantium Zagundis. They are uh, very mere. I purchased them special. I have them custom made. No one else in in universe has creatures it's like this. It's Groper, isn't it? It is not. We call him Chip. Oh. Mine, mine was better. <laughs> was it? Anyway, and Boris is like, oh, one more game. Mm, we don't have time for that. No, no, no. Remember me telling you how you are actually left here by Bounty Hunter to come pick you up? Yeah, he had some of, of uh, Little Bottle, yeah, Little Fuzzy. He'll be fine in six to seven days. These are your Lovely. friends. Go with them. Yes, Boris. We are your friends. If you stay here, you are going to be in trouble. I don't. I don't Come want. I don't want to be in trouble. Great. So we are square. You, me, Hawkwood, all good. I believe so. You're staying on New Phoenicia? I, sh I told you I would show you all of the good spots, especially you, Brother Gabriel. I think we could make lots of firebirds. Maybe fix you on a, on a fight of you versus Runner versus Cutter. I bet on all of you. You all take dive at the same time. Be bet against all of you, and you all take dive at the same time. Um... Uh, JM, would Runner know how to get a hold of Decker if we leave? Yeah. Okay. Great. Because once she gets some money from that, she's going to send some back to Decker. Okay. 
Because he helped capture Boris. He, I mean, yes. Technically, he helped capture Boris. What are you going now? You, uh, you staying? You leaving? We're leaving. It has been a pleasure, Runner. He takes two of your hands and... <laughs> it will never work out between us. No! <laughs> well, I grab Boris and walk out. <laughs> and he kind of puts an arm around Brother Gabriel. There she goes. With my bounty in my heart. <laughs> yes. And I'm nothing but a well-paid escort. Oh, why didn't you say so earlier? We could have made serious money. Well, we're very selective about our clients, but if you ever need anything, just contact the battle order. They'll take care of you. I will. And he smacks Gabriel on the butt. And then turns around, and then turns around and, and what? Cutter. No matter what they say about you, you're all right. <laughs> say hi. Say I'm hi to. I'm very confused by what just happened. <laughs> say goodbye to Father Hot Pants for me. <laughs> and uh, I will see you all the next time you come here to New Phoenicia. Let it never be said that Baron. Alexius, and the door closes, and you don't really hear the, the remainder of whatever he was going to say. Nope. So we're I... never seeing him again. <laughs> Probably not. Evan, have you learned nothing about my games? I will always bring back <laughs> deep dive NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys make it back to your ship. Um, and when you get on there, you uh, are immediately alerted that uh, that the surgical suite is in use. Um, do not enter the med bay. It has been rendered a sterile field. And uh, so what is the plan? Where are you guys going? Um, we need to go to we need to go to some sort of civilized realm, drop off Boris and Jenna's head. And then we head to Phlegathon. I don't know how to get there. You don't, and you don't necessarily have the jump code for it. It is a right. restricted. It is a restricted uh, planet by order of uh, the Earth Orthodox Church. Yes, we gotta go get permission. I have a feeling we'll be able to swing that once somebody comes out of surgery. If someone comes out of the surgery. That's true. That's right. true. Natural 20. <laughs> Who knows what happens to Father Bell? He's reduced to just a head floating on a on an anti-grav plate. Could now be here. No, you're fine, Father we Bell. Save the ear. It's several hours worth of surgery, but the 3D printer prints you a, a, a wonderful new rib. And um, the Sanctuary Aeon Priest, uh, Theodosius, uh, uh, manages to implant it and uh, comes out of surgery. Uh, Father Bell, is, is, he is resting. He is resting well. Um, he should be awake in the next several hours. And I think as long as we don't um, um, encounter that again, he should be fine. The new, right. the new rib is even better than the old rib. Cool. How is it better? It's uh, it's, it's stronger and, and also faster. I have so many bad rib puns right now. I just like, I there's like three stooges. They just can't all get it out at the same time. <laughs> They're just all trying to get through your... Uh... <laughs> your uh, brainstem at the same time and just uh, can't. That's okay. I've been ribbing Evan uh, for at least a week. So, uh, the nearest civilized planet is Ravenna. You can get there within one jump. 
You've been, we've to, been there before. You have been to Ravenna before. That is actually where you guys left when uh, whoop, when dealing with uh, uh, when we first opened up the uh, Annals of Antioch. You were leaving uh, Ravenna as a um, as that planet. Was that okay. Dorian's kind of home base? Was that a Ravenna? It was. Okay. Well, we could return there and see if maybe the Hawkwoods can help procure yeah. the dispensation to go to Phlegathon. Yeah. That's the goal. All right. Well, several um, hours later, you've made it to the jump gate, activated it, and soon uh, you pass through and soon are arriving uh, to uh, R Ravenna. Uh, you know that the, it's, uh, the Cathedral of St. Ambrose is the main cathedral on Ravenna um, and that the bishop in charge of that is um, uh, Bishop Charles. So um, you get a contact from planetary, uh, the planetary governor. Uh, uh, who is this? Where are you? Where are you planning to dock? What is going on, uh, Father Bell? You are up and around. It feels like you know you got punched in the side a couple of times, mm -hmm. repeatedly. Yeah. Uh. This is Runner with uh, Darian Hawkwood's ship. Um, we're here to deposit bounties and uh, talk to Lord House, uh, Lord Hawkwood. Um, I don't believe that uh, Dorian is available. Um, he is currently off-world, but I can patch you through. Do you know how to get to the Hawkwood Estates? I'm assuming I do. You do. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, Valoria Hawkwood is is there, uh, according to um, my system. I can patch you through to her. Uh, lovely. So, JM, I know as a bounty hunter where I drop off these bounties, but where does Becca? Becca doesn't know where we drop off bounties. Um, where do you we drop can, off? Bounties? You can drop them off with the uh, with the Hawkwoods. They're the ones who put the bounties out. So excellent. That's who I want to see. All right. So the chat, uh, Occam's Razor, and I'm not sure if this is, if the if the person commenting is Occam's Razor or they are uh, applying a new uh, GM's Occam Razor, but they said that the more over the top the accent, the more likely okay. the NPC is to reappear, which I either way I agree with. So your your ship descends down through the atmosphere of Ravenna, and you quickly find yourself uh, landing on a beautiful, uh, well-tended, um, lush uh, courtyard uh, that seems to be made of stone, but it bears the weight too well to just actually be any sort of natural material. Um, and then trees and um, uh, grass. You can see where it looks like at some, like some point recently uh, this estate was under siege because there are definitely holes in the walls you know during the husk outbreak that House Hawkwood was one of the places that the husks targeted. Um, but you can see a, a priest. I feel like I'm setting up a bad joke. A noble, a priest, and um, a knight walk up to your ship. Uh, the noble is uh, Dorian's eldest daughter, uh, Valeria. <sighs> Runner, is that you? It's me, Valoria. All right, come on. Dad said to help you however we can. Lovely. I will offload the crew and the bounties. Father Bell, it is always good to see you. Welcome back to Ravenna. Bless you, my friend. Cutter. This 
What? What brings you here? Are you going back to Antioch to help Father? Not Uh, unless he needs help. We haven't heard from him since he went through the gate. That doesn't make me nervous. (laughs) Uh, Brother Gabriel, are you the one escorting the prisoners? For your yeah service, my job, man. I'm an escort. Well, I mean, maybe not the prisoners. I got the bag. Yeah, there's there's a there's a sack <laughs> that's dripping, and then <laughs> Boris. And Boris has definitely come out of whatever Alexi has given him, and he has become more surly and more unruly the longer the trip has gone. <sighs> I see. All right, I will, uh, Severn. And the knight kind of steps forward. Um, you don't know where Severin is from. He is definitely not a member of the Battle Order, but he stands nearly as tall as as Gabriel. I kind of do the. <laughs> he he has the uh, like the resplendent plate mail with the with the tabard that bears the House Hawkwood uh, symbol on it, and a large broadsword across his back, and a and a heavy. Uh, auto feeder strapped to his side. Nice broadsword. Nice. Uh, I think you lost the rest of your your blade. He looks at just the wire blade hilt. <laughs> Man, uh, we weren't on the air. I have a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so frustrating. I appreciate. I I applaud your restraint, Richard. Um. You know what I'm capable of. I, I do. <laughs> it's, it is frankly frightening. Um, so he he takes Boris and Valerius says, "We will get the paperwork worked out and the credits transferred over to you, Runner." I uh, father didn't really speak of what he was sending you on, but he he spoke of it as if it was dangerous. I can't imagine that going after one and Severin shakes his head and holds up the bag. Two two bounties is what he would have sent you. The four of you after. Wait, where's Perpetua? We have much to speak about. My dearest and oldest friend. Oh, crap. Mm-hmm. She watched over you when you were younger, didn't she? Mm. Anyway. We have a long history together. Well, come. I have refreshments set out. We can discuss what what is what is needed. Now, you guys know Vol... Uh, Valoria is, like, poised to, to take over this estate. She runs it in all but name only at this point, because technically Dorian is, right, uh, the patriarch of this um, branch of, of House Hawkwood. But um, Dorian always speaks highly of Valoria. She, she is competent. She has a keen mind for the running of the estate. Um, in Glorantha, she would have a very high uh, managed household skill. It's actually Important a skill. It's, right? You gotta, you gotta be able to translate uh, NPCs throughout uh, all the different games. That's right. Um, and she, so she takes you in, and you guys know that the priest who is, um, or the priestess who is with her, is another one of her friends, um, Amelia. She is a member of. Uh, just the the straight Earth Orthodox sect. She is not a member of one of the of the smaller sects of the uh, of the church. Uh, but uh, she escorts you into the estate, and very soon you are seated around um, a table on one of the terraces that sort of overlooks the river that cuts through um, the main city here. And you still see the scars of that husk outbreak. It got. Very, um, uh, very intense. They were requiring to burn large places of the. Um, or run, uh, you know, that they were burning parts of the city that the battle order was attempting to, uh, take, uh, fight the husks and yes phantom of truth i do feel like they are very close to uh the battle battle or brother battles are very close to uh that other thing that that uh, we should we should not mention here but i do see them as the larger taller broader sort of uh if you go back and look at the 
what's the other game called, Becca? The oh, the uh, Chronicles of the Oh Boy. Uh, I do see them as sort of receiving those uh, uh, special vitamins and hormone treatments. They tried to give Jexa the treatment, and uh, she definitely ran away from that. So, which is dangerous when you're in adolescence, right? Young children get that gene therapy. That's right. So, as as we were walking into towards that building, I'm sure we will separate the groups just slightly, and I will lean into Brother Gabriel and just say all flash and nod towards the shiny knight he is a shiny knight he's also taller that's fine I've seen brother Gabriel in action <laughs> I appreciate your your uh, camaraderie cutter but don't worry I'm I'm not intimidated I appreciate what these uh, what these types do for loyalty to their lord, but we brother battle, we brothers battle have God on our side. Also, I'm pretty sure I could take him. <laughs> uh, Valoria kind of sets you guys down. Uh, all right, so please tell me what is going on. How can we help? What did Father send you on? And where is Perpetua? Brother Gabriel, please stop glaring at Sir Bors. Sir Bors, please. I wasn't glaring. I was just assessing him. When she's asking the questions, who is she looking at? She's, I mean, she defers to Father Bell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Father Bell, you uh, obviously having been a tutor to this estate. Um before kind of stepping out on this, uh, you know, as a member of how, right? Everyone but Cutter is a member of Dorian's retinue, right? That is, that was kind of where, where this all started. So you've all been on this estate before you have all interacted with these people before. Um, so she, she sort of defaults to, to Father Bell as uh, the tutor and spiritual advisor of the household. Uh, you both, you all also know that Amelia is uh, a member of the uh, of the church here, um, and that the church here is actually uh, Temple of Asti um, aligned. So, oh, okay. Question: Yes, did they take the bounties? Oh yeah, am I still uh, Bor yeah. Bors is yeah. Bors is escorting them to the uh, uh, to the dungeons here, and and the sack. Yeah, they, he he took the sack from you. Okay, I just didn't want to walk into the estate, kind of wondering where <laughs> where do I put this dripping thing down? You know. Oh, Cutter, <laughs> classic Cutter. He, he's a yeoman. I, this is way over his head. He, yeah, they 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 sort of hired you on here. You have not been here before. Aside no, from this, is... I mean, you you've interacted with Valoria on a couple of times, but in a very sort of yeoman noble like interaction. <clears throat> Lady Valoria, um, to understand you, your commission to us, um, we have to uh, start here in Ravenna with the Husk infection. I remember. Which we have definitively traced to um, powerful dark forces. Uh, which were confirmed when we were um, uh, mysteriously uh, cast uh, through a gate uh, and uh, arrived in Antioch. Um, there is a greater force at work uh, as well, I believe, and we have seen the signs, uh, and it is a uh, the power of the pan creator working through a lost saint uh, who was uh, important on Antioch uh, and is a powerful counterweight and and foe of the darkness that we fight. Is that not the point of all saints, Father? That they are their souls yes, mirror is a... more burnished. They serve to spur us on to stand as has. Yeah, and this one has 
tapped into uh, or we have been woven however in, in whatever minor way into this saint's continuing story uh, this saint is saint beatrice a lady of light uh who uh uh, who was remembered one of the the remnants of uh, of our faith in lost Antioch, um, and her ancient enemy is a darkness from between the stars known as Eshkagiel. Isn't who was? Isn't all? Isn't that all of our ancient enemies, Father? As I remember you telling me, we must. Yes, but Yes, but, but some... this is a very specific ancient enemy. Okay? <laughs> there's like generalities that you had in like your church teaching, and then there's these specific evils that are trying to crawl their way up into your nostril to set up residence in your brain. This is more of the second thing, so just let Father Bell finish the story. My apologies, Brother Gabriel. Please continue, Father Bell. Thank you, Brother. Uh, uh, we... Uh, met and defeated a fragment of Ashkagel uh, over Antioch. Um, and uh, I believe we, with the, with the support of St. Beatrice, uh, banished that fragment. Uh, Beatrice and Ashkagel have uh, a history. When, when Beatrice still uh, lived, uh, after she had walked with the prophet, she uh, defeated Ashkagel uh, in a, a, a battle between light and darkness. And uh, I am not sure, but Ashkagel may not only have been banished, but perhaps fragmented into different different pieces. Hmm. Uh, the the ship that carried us through the gate uh, was a pirate ship that belonged to a group called the Hesperians. But they had been hired and, in fact, been infiltrated by uh, a cult of antinomists uh, known as the Abandoned. And uh, the Abandoned are worshiping Ashkagel, and Ashkagel is working through them to try and return and to gain more purchase in our uh, in our space um, in our universe uh, and so your father commissioned us to find the uh, origin of the pirate ship uh, and to try and trace the cult through them and indeed on new Phoenicia we found that the Hesperians had essentially been taken over their leadership had, be, had turned antinomist, and they had gone so far as to bring an ancient temple of um, an, an ancient chapel of St. Beatrice to New Phoenicia, desecrate it, and were using it as a nexus to bring uh, Ashkagel uh, more power and influence. Uh, we invaded the Hesperians' uh, territory on New Phoenicia. We uh, confronted uh, the, the chief priestess uh, of Ashkagel and uh, s slew her. And but Ashkagel had in, inhabited the the corporal form of the pirate captain, uh, a, a woman named Regina, and we faced her in the, in the chapel. And she was trying to do something in forming a desecrated uh, uh, altar uh, that would somehow further aid in this uh, attempt at um, returning Ashkagel to greater, greater power. Uh, we thwarted her, but in the fight, she 
manifested and somehow transported Perpetua away. Perpetua was instrumental in opposing her, and she worked some revenge. Uh, but I sense that Perpetua is not not slain, not not destroyed, but uh, evidence that we found in the chapel point to the possibility that Perpetua has been taken to the place uh, of conflict, the last conflict uh, directly between Ashkago and Beatrice, and that is a planet called Legathon. We need to do more research, but we must be swift because Perpetua is in danger and, in fact, House Hawkwood and the Imperium is in danger from this demonic being. I I can put a call in to Bishop Charles and see if he would let you go and, and see their records. I know that um, that the church there maintains a a, uh, a library. Um, you know that the Avesti are They are strict in their keepings to the teachings of the pen creator. And I'm sure that they have, they seal away material that even the Inquisition um, would allow out. I'm sure that you may be able to find something there. Um, give me, I don't know, Crow's ears up their butts, the lot of them. <laughs> yes, I, I see to think that is a, a very uh, appropriate way to describe them, although I would not describe uh, the bishop that way. He seems to have relaxed his grip on that crow's ear uh, in his um, old age. I'm sure that the prophet and the pancreater will show them the way. Well, he was instrumental will, in helping us stopping the husks. Um, we have to find Perpetua. I will... I agree. Give me, give me 15, 15 minutes. I will have a call in with brother or Bishop Charles, and I will have a flitter prepared so, to take you there. I will be right back. She sort of stands up and, and, and walks out very, I mean, she's keeping it together, but she seems very disturbed by basically everything you told her. I would be worried if she wasn't disturbed. <laughs> um, very soon, she returns. The bishop will see you. I've told him, called in several favors, but it will be up to you, and she sort of nods to Father Bell and Brother Gabriel, to get access to the sealed records. I'm, I'm sure that Charles is a friend. You didn't mention the Crozier comment, did you? This is not a, the time for a brick. Brother Gabriel, this is the time for a, uh, or <laughs> neither the time for a brick nor nor a rapier. It is the time for subtlety and and the pen. So, I uh, no, I did not mention that. I would say you should probably not mention that if you want access to the restricted libraries. Um, I have had boars bring around the. Um, my car, and he will take you to Ambrose Cathedral. Yes? Boris is the guy we brought in. Severin was the knight. Severin, yes. Lovely. Severin is the knight, but Bors is another one of her house guards. B-O-R. Oh, okay. Yes. All right, well. 
And in kind of like an offhand question, are my bounties getting paid? <laughs> uh, they will be getting paid, yes. Do you think I would, I would prevent you from getting all of that sweet, sweet money? Yes, I, I, I do think that. <laughs> wow, Becca. I'm... I'm... Because how many times have I tried to get money for Jexa and it keeps just disappearing? I am not about to get into that conversation with you, but I would like to point out that I do believe that uh, <laughs> uh, your uh, step uncle Gregor, Gregor makes sure that you get all of the money that you need. So with with interest. So, uh, Gregor's not here, and I hope Runner gets paid because then Cutter gets paid. None of you have uh, the uh, uh, Charto Phylax. Um, Perk, do you? No. Okay. Uh, if you had the Charto Phylax things. perk, you would just be able to say, I am allowed to uh, view the restricted libraries and sort of waltz in. Maybe sachet, depending on the pants that Father Bell is wearing. Um, wrong, wrong character. So, um, Bors is waiting in the, in the car, and it is a... Um, it is a sleek air car uh, of not Second Republic uh, manufacture, but definitely based off of that, something that the charioteers and the engineers guild have put together for House Hawkwood. And you soon take to the skies. And Ambrose Cathedral, again, sits up on this. Um, it's in the capital city, but it sits up on this hill so that all of the city is kind of in the valley that sort of surrounds it. And it is this magnificent... Um, edifice that has been built uh, by the church it is beautiful it has its own you know you have the the main cathedral there are several buildings there's a small abbey uh, that is that is uh, on on site it has a um, well not a full monastery it does have a small garrison uh, for the battle order to uh, uh, to be housed there and it does have its own landing uh, spot and very soon uh, you guys have uh, just a short jump from the house Hawkwood estate to the cathedral and there are three battle order uh, members waiting for you when you land and they sort of stand it goes battle order temple of Vesti uh, priest battle order of Vesti battle order and so, um, one of them comes forward. Ah, always a pleasure to meet members of the Eschatonic Order and more of the Battle Order. I am Suri. How might I um, f greet you first in the name of the Pan Creator, and how might we be of service? Thank you, I believe. Lady Valoria Hawkwood has contacted Mr. Charles on our behalf. Yes, the bishop asked me to um, see what, what, what you need. He is the bishop of the cathedral and is quite busy, and I am, again, at your service, Father Bell. Suri? Father Suri? Is that, do I have that correct? Uh, no, Sister Suri. Sister Suri, sorry. They're working on accent. Uh, is this S I R I? Siri, what's the. No, S A R E E. <laughs> okay. Distinctly, legally, they're separate. Yes. <laughs> Siri, show me. No. Um... <laughs> I, I, I've been holding it in. <laughs> let it out, Richard. Let it out. <laughs> Just remember, I do the talking and you do the violencing. Um, so it's, it's a strict uh, separation of powers. Um, we have need uh, to uh, conduct research uh, into uh, restricted archives. Mm-hmm. 
uh, based on uh, a uh, mission that we need to conduct on behalf of House Hawkwood and the church. Um, I think perhaps there is a, uh, a better place to discuss the details uh, than here on the tarmac. Um, yes, it will be. I, I will do what we can, but you know, as it, as, as it says, bind away the knowledge of the darkness so it does not lead the sheep astray. And I'm not sure what we may be able to share with you. Um, uh, well, I think that I think that you will be able to share uh, everything that, that is available uh, in order to uh, carry out the will of the pancreator, the prophet, and the saints. But we can... We are uh, always adhere to the will and the word of the pancreator and the prophet and the saints. Then we are in a, we are in an accord. All right, she bristles. <laughs> Umbridge has been taken, Father Bell. <laughs> And she spins on her heels and starts walking to the cathedral at a very brisk pace. The other three battle order sort of nod to Brother Gabriel. Brother? Brother. 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 (laughs) Doctor. 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 Uh, They sort of spread out in kind of a half circle around you. And the wide-eyed acolyte of the Avesti just kind of glares at Father Bell with with uh, more indignation and less tact than the than the sister. Well, come on! You can't keep Sister Suri waiting. So I'm moving on. Okay. They, she takes you in. Of course, a, so. of course you should. <laughs> uh, a small uh, door at the back of the of, of the cathedral, and you very soon find yourself in uh, sort of a resting room. You can hear the chants of the um, uh, uh, the liturgical hours being performed by um, a large. I mean, the sound of it sounds like a choir of the Avesti, and you know Father Bell, and you know Brother Gabriel that right. The Avesti are. The strict and literal adherence um, to to the Omega Gospels, and so Suri sort of Sister Suri sits down. And what exactly is the knowledge that you are seeking, Father Bell? And what purpose you do realize that um, both the member of the Avesti and the Inquisition restrict information for very good reasons. As it says in the Gospels, beware the dark between the stars, bring a lantern to it. Knowledge is the lantern that I seek because there is grave danger to the appearing. As you know, the eschatonic order has uh, pursued uh, the uh, knowledge to protect humanity, to uh, to vindicate the church, and to uh, glorify the pan creator and the prophet, and to be guided by the saints. I claim no special uh, dispensation. I am but a a humble uh, tool of uh, 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 higher powers and uh, the will that guides us all. Hmm. Spoken Uh, like a member of the eschatonic order. Your... then, Then I am playing my role. Hmm. Uh, but you know that it's they are still not super happy that you are an accepted uh... (laughs) that's okay but we're still all friends here sure (laughs) one big happy 
One big happy. I think time. they'll they'll be willing to say you're not an enemy, but not a friend. Not not quite. What do you know of the saint, uh, the the uh, the saint called Beatrice, the Lady of Light? You see, she kind of, her eyes kind of. What? Uh, I tap the reliquary. Lose focus for a bit. I know that oh. that is not a name that should be said. But Beatrice is uh, on the list of sanctioned saints. And I would be wondering where you found her name, or I can only assume by the way that uh, Brother Gabriel reacted reflexively, some sort of reliquary of this saint? Uh, you are perhaps familiar with the claim that House Hawkwood has asserted on the lost planet of Antioch? Yes, the nobles grab at whatever land and people they can. And you are familiar, perhaps, with the fact that a lost flock has been rejoined to the church, the body of the church. Uh, perhaps you are unaware that it is through the hand of hand creator acting through his saint, Beatrice, a companion of the prophet, that this has been accomplished on you... the planet of Antioch we found a reliquary which c contained the mantle of St. Beatrice Brother Gabriel is her chosen champion <laughs> I am <laughs> I thought you had I mean, figured that out, but he is. Yes. Uh, and long ago, she foresaw the need for uh, uh, for uh, members of the church to uh, act against a rising darkness, and she left her mantle and uh, and, and a weapon, which has come to the hands of Brother Gabriel, and to me. I have been blessed with visions of her light and her great foe from between the darkness from the darkness between the stars is a demon whose name I would not like to invoke, but I do not fear her, for I have faced her, and Saint Beatrice has triumphed each time. The pen creator has triumphed a, each time. Through. Indeed, working through her, working through his saint. Her her left now, eye is just. And this. now this demon, whom I name as Ashkagiel, who is nothing before the might of the pen creator, but who seeks to work great evil among humanity and the stars, has retreated to a stronghold on a planet called Phlegathon. And we need to arm ourselves with the knowledge that will allow us to further banish this creature. I can give you more proofs We can pray on it. The name that you mentioned is known to us. That is the name that the antinomists here were invoking when they summoned the Husk Plague. Indeed. For that was the hand of Ashkagel as well. And we had a part in dispelling it. So, uh, Father Bell, I would yeah. really love you to give me a presence okay. plus charm roll. Ooh, charm. Yeah. Uh, do you know weird point, Father Bell? <laughs> um, I have I have a weird point. And, okay. Uh, I will spend it. Presence plus charm. Um, Cutter, Runner, and Gabriel, please give me a perception plus observe roll. This is going to be a uh, a sort of uh, 
this will not generate VP for you. I'm just trying to see what like what you roll and kind of what you get, if that makes sense. You gotta... Am I using my nose or my eyes? Oh, uh, your eyeballs. I have a success, and I will spend eight. You are making a uh, an impression. All right, uh, runner. What did you get? Uh, I got a thirteen out of fourteen. All right, Gabriel. Uh, perception plus observe roll. What did you get, Cutter? Five out of sixteen. And runner, you do smell Cutter sweating nervously. Can you turn on? Failed. Okay. Uh, Cutter and runner, you know notice that the. Uh, the the battle order that is standing here, the brother battles, uh, and sister, um, they all bear the uh, uh, the seal of the Inquisition on their armor. And they are standing here watching. Oh, these are the guys around the tarmac. Mm hmm. Yeah, you should have mentioned that before I came in here because I'd have stayed on the ship. You didn't ask for a perception roll, so <laughs> that's true. Okay. Um, yeah, so I've, I mean, I've been keeping my mouth shut, obviously, as Father Bell is talking, and I'm definitely watching the uh, siblings battle. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, preparing that if they move towards Father Bell to get between them and him. Narratives which continue. Okay. Not aggressively, but I will. I will stand between them. All right. Should be fairly easy if you can take three of them. I might be able to delay one until you can get to them. I, I appreciate it, uh, Brother Gabriel. What? Uh, what? Uh, are you guys? Brother Gabriel didn't notice, so. I can take you. Just hanging with my brothers. To the, um, to the archives, and we will see what you find, Father Bell. But I must speak with the bishop and others. And she glances towards the battle order. For what you say you have and what you say you have encountered needs to be reviewed. But you have at least impressed upon me that if you are allowed to leave the cathedral, you should go with the knowledge. If you are not, then it does not matter what you know. The Inquisition will see to, to you. I have no fear of the Inquisition. I have no fear for my soul as a pancreator. Then you have nothing to fear here. I know. Come with me, all of you. And she stands up. Thank you, sister. And she leads you through the cathedral. Yes, Cutter? You have the I want to do something look in your eye. I have the I don't really want to go deeper into this cathedral of Doom. judgment. But I will get up with the group and go with them. I, think I was you... kind of hoping like Father Bell, follow me and the rest of you stay here. I think I, that's okay. That's not what happened, and I and you as you travel deeper into let's call this the the temple of doom. Um, uh, you uh, she leads you down to the catacombs, and there is a large vault down here. And between her and one of the battle order, they input a series of codes on uh, what look to be archaic. Um, um, dials that are built into the side of the vault and you can hear things spinning and the loud clangs of bars and bolts being drawn back and as the doors open you can see lights start to come on and there is a magnificent library down here um which seems strange that you would keep it down in you know below the cathedral but uh, when she passes through the door you can see there's some sort of static effect around her 
Um, and she sort of steps through. Well, if your information is anywhere, it will be here. Thank you, sister. All right. And is there a index or a... There is a, a Saint uh, Dewey. Um, is... <laughs> No, uh, there is. You, you're going to have to give me an academia role to try and find what you're looking for there, Father Bell. There is no oh, curator no. or no. caretaker here. But when you pass Don't through the, when you pass through the, uh, the doors, you all feel that same sort of uh, static. You see the same light kind of around you, and there is a runner, <laughs> runner for a brief second, kind of. Um. In here is, like, everything is climate controlled in this room. It is sort of the perfect um, temperature and humidity for the preservation of these ancient scrolls and data sets and books and um, hollow vids and um, hard light um, uh, data storage and solid state data. I mean, it's just, it is a, you are walking through the history of the Imperium, kind of going all the way back to the Second Republic. Whatever the Temple of Esti has in here, they must consider it pretty bad to sort of be, you know, sequestered away like this. Um, because you are in this library, however, Father Bell, I will allow it to be a favorable roll for you. So you will get to roll two dice and pick the better of the two. Um, what are the rest of the, what are the other three of you doing while, I mean, the, the other battle order are following you in here. I would like to subtly be between Father Bell and the nearest battle order. Um, I mean, if you want to give me a dexterity plus uh, sneak roll just to see if you can blend in, you are a Vorox, so subtle is not an adjective that we normally apply to your movement or actions. True. <laughs> roll the <a> one. <laughs> how much are you willing to spend to see how subtle you can be? Or do you just want to say, I am not that subtle? I will spend four. I was like, if she surges, this is going to be the funniest use of... Okay. You're, I mean, you can't tell if they notice. You don't notice, right. them, I mean... notice them noticing you, but you sort of position yourself right where you want to be. Right. It's more of just as we walk, like... I happen to keep getting in front of one of them who is trying to get closer to Belle, and so they cannot. And it's just because I'm so big. I'm sorry. I just, I'm just in the way all the time. I don't know how it happens. I'll just wander away looking at whatever. Does one of those one of the, dudes follow me? Yep. One of them okay. follows you. Very good. I'm just looking around. I, I know how to read and write, but is more books than I know what to do with. Gabriel, what are you doing? Well, I'm doing what all brother battles do when they hang out together. I am quietly tactically assessing the situation and figuring out in what order I would kill them. <laughs> this it, is not an alarm state. This is just, this is your, your relaxed, hypothetical, like, yeah, daydream state. I'm like, I'm like... <laughs> Like, I would grab that pencil, and I'd put it in that guy's eye, and then I would pull out his spleen, and then I'd... So I'm just kind of, like, assessing the situation for fun, mostly because books are kind of boring. It's not the books that are boring, it's the fact that they're just filled with words. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, a book is a pretty, like, it's a pretty useful weapon under certain circumstances, especially, like, some of the really big, big ones they yeah. have in here, like... Yeah, the ones that have like the metal corners, like yeah, you just like jam that in a guy's mouth and start John wicking him. That's right. Um, books like that are available from Ulysses, uh, the collector's edition of the Dark Eye book, for example, or um, the collector's edition of it. Great basically, book to John wick someone with. A hundred percent. I could probably take one of these really thick illuminated books and just put it on my chest to stop bullets. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just kind of. Sort of assessing the situation. All right, Father Bill, what did you get? 
Uh, I take it this is a wits plus academia roll? This is a wits plus academia roll. Right. Another weird point? Uh, no. It's already favorable. Uh, oh, yes, it is already favorable. Um, and for a moment, it, it feels like maybe I'm, I'm not going to make it, but then I pull on the threads of fate and turn my 14 to a 12, which beats the 13 that I need. All right. So, Father Bell, this is a spend. Uh, you will find the information that you want. The more you spend, the quicker you find the information. Uh, how about uh, 10? All right. Half a bell later. Well, a full bell later, but half a hour later. Um, you, you find it. Um, there is an account of what happened on uh, a flagathon and uh, on the surface it looks like it was a terraforming accident that what um, it, it was it is not uncommon or it was not uncommon at that time for um, terraforming to go wrong it was still a new science um, even even the best of the uh, terraformers still made mistakes um there are um right uh reports of um the rivers uh containing too much iron content and um the atmosphere becoming toxic and um you know kind of the 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 typical high level like what a church scribe would record However, there is also a, an account um, from a brother, Haz, who um, reports that he, as, as a member, he was a member of the terraforming um, group that went there. He was observing um, on behalf of the church and something was found on the planet. Um, he describes it as a basalt castle that uh, reared up out of the ground like a claw from the grave. Uh, most of the people who came back from that terraforming mission, including Brother Haas, um, they died relatively soon after making it back to known space. And not all of them had the firmest grasp on their sanity when they returned. Um, Father Bell, as you look through this, it is, um, it is the recordings of the ravings of a madman. Um, save for the fact that you've seen some of these things. Um, bodies spike to altars. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the stench of the planet being like that of an abattoir. Um, uh, that it lingered for days in one's nose and that uh, they, uh, I will never be clean again, just kind of repeated throughout there. And also, um, a reference multiple times to the mother of crows and ravens and the caretaker of carrion. And then finally, at the end, a reference to Ashkagayo. Kind of linking all of that together. And with there, you do see um, a uh, in the terraforming reports, there are uh, the star charts for the planetary for both northern and southern hemisphere. But you do find the jump gate code. Cool. Are there any charts or maps or anything that that uh, show the surface, this basalt castle, uh, the facilities that were used that were that the terraformers were using? Any sort of anything like that? Uh, yeah, you uh, you have access to those charts, and if Perpetua were here, she would be able to incorporate them into her think machine. But yeah, sadly, um, but not. It looks However, like it looks like the uh, the dome 
Uh, at least when they left, the Terraform site dome was still operable. It has the codes to access that as well. Um, and there were several... Um, their uh, engineer guild... Um, they still use something like this. Um, they're basically an environmentally sealed crawler that allows uh, one to travel through hostile um, environs. Uh, you also know that... Um, it looks like um, the terraforming engines, like everything was left behind. Like the Avesti just sealed the whole thing. So this is something like decades old or centuries old? Um, more like millennia old. Millennia old, okay. Hmm. So have to be some pretty good uh, slash uh, uh, heretical uh, tech for it to be working still but hey not so much heretical but you know definitely against the current prescriptions of the church for use in um general right so for purposes of temple temple of Vesti, heretical yes sure maybe again maybe not heretical but definitely like wildly outside what is prescribed for use even by the nobility in um so there's this there's this balance, right? Like the church has uh, laid down these prescriptions against technology of certain tech levels for the majority. Um, the guilds operate higher technology, and the church high, operate higher, or the church operates higher technology, as do the nobility. So they form this triangle um, of essentially mutual, mutually uh, assured destruction, right? When the church prescribed the first thing against. Um, you know, weapons tech. The nobility and the guilds were like, "Uh huh." Um, in the in the uh, the words of a certain, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, the come and take it mentality. Um, and so the church has uh, rewritten the prescriptions so that the nobilities bear the burden of the sin of using technology, so that society may continue. Much like the guilds bear the burden of the sin, it's almost like a scapegoat. Um, or a sin eater type of clause. Um, that way the church can can say, it's fine for you to use them. We get to use them too. Aren't there some worlds that still use the terraforming? Because it, it happened and it just keeps running, but they haven't done anything new. It's just... Exactly. Terraform, you can live here, but don't ever do it again. Uh, right, most most of those happened. Most of the worlds were terraformed during, before, or during the Second Republic. Yes, right. Republic. Not after, not afterwards, when the church yep. sort of rose to prominence. Well, uh, so is the protocol? I mean, they're letting me uh, examine this, and then deciding whether or not they let me walk out with my friends uh, afterwards. Um, uh, is this a situation I mean is everybody standing around staring at me examining these books or well as you look I... back it's very clear to you that Runner has placed herself between you <laughs> and the uh, the two battle order you can see all three of the battle order members here the two that are guarding you and brother Gabriel have this far away look in their eyes as if they're all figuring out how they would murder each other at this yeah. moment and you you can sure. hear the clomping boots of another battle order the other battle order member that followed uh cutter i'm just um, wandering look for um, a picture book yeah. well i'll i'll definitely i mean i will try to commit everything to memory but i'm going to take some notes too particularly of uh give me uh, yeah give me a thing. uh a will plus focus roll will plus focus the doors hiss open again and Sir, uh, Sister Suri comes in. You may, you may leave now. I must speak with them in the privacy of the, the library. It comes from Bishop Charles and the battle order. One of them kind of touches a patch on, on her neck and uh, sub vocalizes. And the one following you kind of stops, nods and, and walks away. Uh, is this a blind bid sort of situation, or uh, just... Uh... Uh, no, six will allow you to commit all of this to memory. Okay. Then 
I rolled a two and I will surge and uh, spin. Um, all right, so Father Bell, uh, you have the map committed to memory, you have the jump gate code, and you have the access codes to the domes. Uh, you're pretty sure you're going to need survival gear on the planet. Oh, yeah. Okay. If we only had a scout. <laughs> we'll be meeting her there. Uh... Hopefully. She's scouting it out ahead. You must hurry. The Inquisition has heard that you are here, and there are several. There are several who have taken an interest in this Beatrice, Saint Beatrice. You are not the only ones who have been investigating into them recently. The Inquisition is moving against her revelation. Cool. She was those who were involved with her. There was an incident at Milan Station. An entire space station um, lost power and many lives were lost. Um, there's another of the Battle Order, uh, a sister, Gemma. Uh, she has been, according to um, the Inquisitor here, uh, leaving a trail of heretical footprints throughout the known worlds. I have a fear that the Inquisition is coming for you all. Wait, a sister who? Gemma. Gemma, not Jenna. Not Jenna. Gemma. Okay. It's a, sure, it's a big universe. It's a big I will, universe. Uh, I, I will pray for their enlightenment and I, I thank you. you. You need to hurry. Do you have what you need? I do indeed. Um, or could mention to them that I... Nothing seemed to be, nothing seemed to be there. It doesn't but, matter. You know, I leave it to there. Um, then, uh, then we shall withdraw. Uh, may the prophet's light shine upon you. And you as well, Father Bill. I do not know if what you speak is the truth, or merely the truth Look as you see it. But what you said seemed to resonate and the fact that you have she kind of looks with disdain at Cutter and, and Runner, but I'm used to it. Your brother Gabriel and you Sister Gemma, when I spoke with her the last time she was here, spoke with earnestness as well. I will begin my own investigations. Somehow this is tied because the, when we, when the demon spoke on New Phoenicia, uh, she mentioned uh, a lot of yep. Hurry, you have maybe ten minutes before the inquisitorial ships arrive. They are they were investigating the husk outbreak. Cleaning up after others is. So often is the case. Uh, let us withdraw. Post haste. All right. Um, as soon as we like leave church, where I'm assuming our comms were at least quieted, if not completely shut off, um, I'm going to call ahead. Excuse me, to Valoria Hawkwood, and see if she can get together environmental suits for us, or if we'll have to find it elsewhere. And medical supplies would be nice. Go through those like quite a, a bit. Fully outfitted ship that will take us through. Uh, the <laughs> ship that you have, Will. Excellent. Um, I mean, yeah, Runner, I can get them for you. How soon do, do you need them? Did you find what you were looking for? We did. Can you get them to us in ten minutes? Ten, ten minutes for environmental... Suits and medical supplies? I, I... Did Gabriel say the thing that I told yes. him not to no. say? <laughs> yes, he did. I Gabriel didn't say anything. <laughs> I was 
super quiet. It's it's just an entanglement that no one usually expects. Um, as you guys are talking and walking to your ship, you can see that there are three inquisitorial, um, not battle order, not the three that, that you saw, uh, there, there is about a half dozen, sorry, um, inquisitorial troops standing at the ramp of your ship. Oh. Um, Valoria, it, can we get one of those in ten minutes? I will see what you what I can do. Get back here as quick as you can. I'm assuming in about ten minutes. Yep. All right. Uh, so, uh, so who's in charge? Um, a uh, a sergeant in sort of a faceless uh, helmet steps forward. Uh, and holds up their hand. You can see uh, a digitized um, inquisitorial seal appeals appears on this. By the order of Inquisitor Francus, you are ordered to stand down and relinquish your weapons. You are being reprimanded into imper or remended into imperial custody. Uh. No. I don't think you have clearance for that, actually. You say no, and, and there's that one guy whose hand definitely kind of creeps to his side. I mean, I'm going to just keep walking towards me. Now, this isn't a regular ship. This was just the transport from House Walkwood to here, right? Yes. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the little litter like thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. I said stop. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Sir, what rank are you? <clears throat> sar sar <clears throat> sergeant? Right, Sergeant. Well, as you probably know, according to the Accord of 4235, all Avestides are required to obey Orthodox clerics of equal or higher rank. Um, you see... The sergeant uh, kind of looks at his uh, writ, his built-in think machine on his armor and kind of... Fuck me in the eye when I'm talking to you. <laughs> All right, now give me a impress plus presence roll there, Brother Gabriel. <laughs> Does he get anything because I'm just still stalking towards them? Um, are you trying to be super intimidating, Runner? I am. I want them to move. They're going to get out of my way. Rearing up like some sort of millipede centaur, Runner gets larger... <laughs> And uh, you I'm can make third. this a favorable role, Brother Gabriel. I'm going to go in third. Uh, and I'll spend... Um, I'll spend 11 on this. Okay. And it is favorable. Just remember, just remember yeah. back when you say you grab all eight guards, you can say, look, you said I was a millipede and I've got... 9,000 arms, so... For the record, in case this is your first time tuning in, Vorox only have six limbs. Um, I, I, so I succeed with a nine. Okay. Uh, do you want to spend all nine to overcome mental resistance? Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, he, uh, the sergeant definitely looks at you and you reflect, you see all of the other five they all sort of snap to attention reflexively as well. I mean, uh, yeah, yes, uh, brother, what? I I am sorry, but... Right, so here's how this is going to go. All right. I've got important work to do on this ship. So we're going to get on this ship. And when your superiors show up, we'll talk to them. Um, uh, um do, where where will you be taking the ship? I'm not going to be taking the ship anywhere, soldier. <laughs> um, right. Stand up straight. <laughs> who who will be taking the ship where so that I can Let tell the Inquisitor weapon, when he arrives where where to find you? I said, let me see your weapon. Uh, he un unsnaps and hands you his auto feeder. 
this is filthy. <laughs> uh, Runner, you at this point can walk, like, you, you can just walk past. Are the rest I of just kind of, kind of gently put my hand on Father Bell's back and kind of, let's go, Father Bell. <laughs> kind of pushing him forward. But, 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 <laughs> but before I go, I, I will just reach out to the sergeant and say, I, I offer you the blessing of the prophet that you may, that, that you may, you may open the heart of your uh, your commander to the the rightness of your action, um, and I cast Prophet's holy blessing on him, uh, with the uh, the purpose of allowing him to to um, uh, be able to talk his way out of getting in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you have definitely uh, he he kind of thanks like the helmet turns and again it's this very sort of metallic thank you. Uh, through through the helmet, and then he goes back to being berated. He is both afraid, and with nine points, he's basically uh, afraid, confused, and commanded, sort of all rolled up into one. Look, we'll be on the planet finding the person who trained you and taking my cleaning rod and shoving it way up their bottom. <laughs> you definitely hear someone snicker. Is filthy, and you should be I, ashamed. I, I am. What are you laughing at? <laughs> and you he, get your men under control, Sergeant. He turns around and starts yelling at his men. I just walk up <laughs> the ramp and close it. Um, you leave six very confuzzled. Um, inquisitorial troops who hopefully with Father Bell's um, you know the, inqui the inquisitors are not known for their uh, forgiving or understanding nature and uh, you have left them in a pickle but maybe Father Bell's influence will uh, will help them out. Cutter. Not, not my influence. Brother Gabriel you're so forceful with them as soon as we get on the floor I start cleaning my rifle. <laughs> Cutter sort of is breaking down his weapon. All right, um, you, by the time you get back to House Hawkwood, Valoria is waiting there, and she has several crates. What did you do? I have an inquisitorier, inquisitor, um, Francus, Francos, is, he is demanding that I detain you. I have, of course, told him that I have not seen you today, and that the, uh, um, that my air car was reported stolen, um. What have you done? I'm going to start taking the crates and taking them onto the ship. <laughs> there are, I'll help. Uh, there are basically, medical supplies. Basically, basically, the Avesti have very tiny little heads, and they've only got room for so much fundamentalism in there, and it keeps them from being able to properly maintain their weapons. I'm going to chalk this up to one of those things that when we have more time, you will explain in detail. Your ship, the one here, this is a House Hunkwood transport that was supposed to take off a half hour ago. You need to be on it, and you need to be on your way. I will see what I can do to smooth this over. I don't have very many favors with the Inquisition, but hopefully if you lie low. Do you know where you're going? We do. Is it off the beaten path? Very so off. Excellent. Go with the grace of the pan creator, all of you. The Inquisition, or it forces within it, are seeking to suppress Saint Beatrice. She is a lost saint, and they feel that she is prescribed. But this is some error which has crept in, and I fear a greater, greater influence of the darkness, even within the body of the church. Guard yourself well, and. Go with the blessing of the prophet. All right. So very soon you were back on the ship. And when you get on there, um, the pilot uh, uh, kind of calls back, Hey, um, I'm supposed to input a new a new registry. What, uh, what do we want to name this thing? House Hawkwood Transports. Lady of Light. Well, I was going to say, like, Luminata? 
Yeah, something light. I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna be blatant Lady of Light, but I mean, if that's what Father Bell wants. <laughs> Lady of Light with two middle fingers on either side of it for the Inquisition. <laughs> right. La Lady of Light, uh, Luminata, which one are we going with? I can't take off without it. How about, I mean, Lightbringer? I feel like we're, we're going to get sued for copyright infringement over that one. Right. Chat, any ideas? Um, <laughs> don't go to the chat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I guess, I guess, uh, I guess, uh, let's see, in Latin, that would be like Luminatrix, right? Luminatrix. Perfect. All right. As, <laughs> as the ship takes off and you leave Ravenna behind, um, you quickly make your way toward the jump gate. The codes that uh, Father Bell provides. Uh, the chat recommended uh, Luminaris uh, Eternia. Uh, Eternia. So. Cool. It's kind of a mouthful. <laughs> the crew. Yeah, Phantom of Truth. If I if I stumbled over it, just reading it in chat, I don't know that I could say it every week. But yeah, I like I imagine it. introducing that at the beginning of every session. Um, the jump gate opens up, and again, right, you see the image of the last time the jump gate was there, and uh, it opens on a uh, on an asteroid field. None of the asteroids are moving, right? And as your ship kind of goes through. Um, you start getting rock backed and forth as asteroids kind of and, and uh, smaller rocks are pinging off the ship. The jump gate here is not ideally uh, positioned. And then Phlegathon comes into view. Um, it's nacreous atmosphere sort of reflecting in the light of the sun of this system. And as you approach the clouds takes you several hours to make your way in system. And as the um, Luminatrix that we went with, all right, descends into the clouds. We will pause there and we will pick up next week with you guys arriving at Phlegathon and searching in the wreckage of this planet for Perpetua. Thank you all for playing. Uh, thank you all for watching. Chat, I hope you realize now that I am getting constant updates. And I love reading and uh, involving you and uh, uh, sharing your thoughts with the group. We will be back next Thursday with more uh, Fading Suns. We will be back on Tuesday with more of our tour game. If you have not checked in with that, uh, we left off at a cliffhanger. And the once heroic Storm Knight uh, Lapis is now holding an entire aircraft carrier hostage. <laughs> Occam's Razor suggested the radioactive bullet as the name of the ship. <laughs> so <laughs> close. I was going to suggest Furball. We may be back with we a new name for the years. ship. We could uh, change the whole thing. We could change the whole thing to like uh, old time radio drama feel, which would be the Bulleteers. <laughs> Little bullet helmets. Yep. Uh, if you guys dance more, you could be the bullets. Um, on Thursdays, Ulysses uh, has the campfire chats for Myth, uh, um, Tales of Legend. Uh, they have shows for basically every one of the games that Ulysses does. If you like Fading Suns and want to know more about it, go to their YouTube channel and check out Heretical Musings. It's with uh, two of the designers and creators of the new edition of Fading Suns, and they are knowledgeable and they share a ton of stuff. Um, so yes, thank you, as always, for tuning in. Thank you for participating in the chat, for watching here, for watching on YouTube. Um, we will share the comments that, uh, that get left on the show. Um, and, and share thank yous for that. Thank you to my wonderful crew uh, for participating in this crazy put-together um, that has turned into just an amazing game that I enjoy running uh, for the um, Curse of the Abandoned. We are almost done with this arc, and I just want to say thanks to everyone who has been involved. And again, thank you to our producer, JD. 
I do not say that often enough, who is working tirelessly behind the scenes to make sure the show looks good and to make sure uh, you guys in the chat are um, entertained. Are you not entertained? Thank you, JD. Um, until next Thursday, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, enjoy your games, uh, tell great stories, and we will see you on Thursday next week.